Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Before we jump in with our very special guest today, I want to remind all of you out there in ATP land, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so now. Whip out your cell phone and text the word truth in the message box and address it to the number 88202, push send. We will sign you up in seconds to get all of our videos, our articles, our commentary right in the palm of your hand. It's absolutely for free and it'll take you just a couple of seconds. Having done that housekeeping, I want to bring on a very special guest, Annie Cyrus, the most famous child bride escapee from Iran. She's a known expert in all things Islam. She's the founder of Live Up to Freedom, and she is the editor of what we do here at ATP. Welcome back, Annie. Thanks for having me back, Barry. Let's talk about what happened just in the last couple of days. It's earth shattering news. Um, the Iron Dome system in Israel has protected tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of Israelis from the terror rockets fired at them from not only the north, but mostly the south in Gaza. And it is a 100% defensive weapons system that was developed by Israeli scientists and working in conjunction with the American military has now been shared with the American military. For the first time in American history, members of Congress blocked the replenishment of the Iron Dome system and specifically our good friends, the squad that loves Islam and hates America, also hates Israel and they blocked the funding. Fortunately, it's going to go through anyway with an ancillary bill. But I guess the question is, how is it possible that this I hate Israel, I hate America squad continues to grow in power week by week? Well, I agree with you. It, even though they're not technically blocking it, it's the gesture that counts. And to answer your question, I think the main reason is because we, the people, have failed our country. Because the first time Ilhan Omar came out with the most anti-Semitic comments rather than say anything. Now, please note when I say we, I understand Annie Cyrus, Barry Newsbaum, your audience, my audience. Yes, we are doing our part, but we're not the majority. We're the minority within the minority in this country. When I say we, I mean the majority of Americans, they just kept quiet. When Rashida Tlaib came dancing wrapped in Palestinian flag and dropping F-bomb towards President Trump, she got away with it. So they started the small, but now they have gained momentum to where it's a lot harder to say something about it because we didn't say anything before. So they kept on doing it bigger and bigger and bigger to now where sadly and unfortunately, as you said, earth shattering. Who would have ever thought that America would be the country that's gonna, as they phrase it, defund the, the uh, missile defense program of Israel. It's tragic and thank goodness the rest of the Dems have excluded them from the vote, so to speak, and it will pass and it will get funded, as you said. So switching gears a little bit, there's a Middle East scholar named Daniel Pipes, and he says that uh, atheism and uh, the leaving from Islam is spreading inside of Islam. And he cites books and speeches and videos posted by ex-Muslims like Annie Cyrus, saying that we've had it, we're tired of the jihad and we want to be regular people and we want to be in the 21st century. And yet many Muslim majority countries punish those that leave Islam and they call that crime apostasy um, with execution. And it, Libya, Mauritania, Somalia, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Iran, Afghanistan, Malaysia, and Brunei. In all those countries, Annie, the death penalty can be used if you leave Islam. Now, on a personal basis, you're one of the most famous, at least in the United States, for people that have left and have cried out against the horrors of what they do to their own people, let alone to other people. Do you believe that that risk that everyone else that is facing applies to you too, meaning 
you left and now there's a target on your back? Well, before I answer that question, I just want to add that even though you mentioned, you know, majority of the countries, Islamic countries, let's not forget here and there, it's also happening in America. We had many honor killings taking place in America based on the record released by the government of United States of America, averaging 27 to 34 honor killings are happening in America. And uh, they are all under the same category. There were two westernized, meaning not being a good enough Muslim, meaning leaving Islam or turning their back to Islam. I just wanted to put this out there. And yes, um, that risk, well, the bounty or fatwa on my becoming an ex-Muslim was issued originally by my own father when I left. Um, but then it was renewed uh, on one of my charges by the regime of Iran, which is Muharrabe waging war against Allah. When I came out publicly, not only continue speaking against Islam, but I announced uh, my conversion to Christianity because that's double the crime. Uh, but I would say even people inside Islamic countries, very, there is so much a human can take before they just can't take it anymore. There is so much oppression they can take when they say, you know, give me freedom or give me death, give me liberty or give me death. That's where they're at. I know many Iranians who are done with it. Kill me, that's fine, but I'm not going to give in to this oppressive slavery of a life anymore. So are you worried personally? Am I worried? Um, no, because we're all going to die one day somehow. I, I'm one of those believers that my expiration date was issued the way the day I was born. But I am concerned that Western governments are not seeing it. Fair enough. And from all of us at ATP, we admire your bravery. It's, it's really impressive and astounding. So at the Del Rio International Bridge, um, which is the connection between Texas and Mexico, um, that's an entry point that's being flooded with illegals. Uh, in recent days, they're showing something like 14,000 people congregating there now because they've been invited by the United States, so to speak, to illegally immigrate into our country. And the fact is, and what concerns me and the question for you is out of those tens of thousands that are coming in, we're not vetting them. And we don't know who they are. And we don't know, I mean, the more mundane things like, geez, do you have COVID or did you have a vaccine? But on a terroristic point of view, out of tens of thousands coming in, it only takes a couple who are terrorists who are sent say by the Taliban or ISIS or Islamic Jihad or Hamas to come in and do incredible damage, literally causing a catastrophe in our country. Do you think that risk is real? Absolutely. And not just, I, I, want, I want to say the whole concept of open border, which is the narrative or favorite narrative by the left Democrats, is for per, the, the purpose of it is to bring in destruction. Now, either Islamic jihad is destruction, which I can confirm. I, I, I don't know if your audience are aware, but um, two Afghan refugees who were brought in recently from Afghanistan in Wisconsin military base were just indicted uh, with sex, uh, sorry, child, uh, child abuse, including sexual abuse and a strangling and physical abuse of a child. That child was their child right. Now, the, I consider that part of Islamic jihad, Islamic terrorism, it's terrorizing for Americans when they hear that in the news because they're not familiar with the concept in America. So I just want to be clear when I say terror and destruction, I don't mean just jihadis who are going to come in, blow themselves up. No, this is destruction. Uh, they're either cartel members, you know, drug dealers, human traffickers, Islamic jihadists. That is the purpose of open border. Because if they wanted to save real refugees, they would actually close the border and make sure those who come in like me through processing every documentation and proving who we are, we would have a safe haven in America instead of looking over our shoulders with seven imams inside seven American mosques 
putting bounties on our head. No kidding. Iran kicked out the IAEA. Um, they stopped adhering to the JCPOA as bad as it was, at least there was some semblance or attempt to oversee what they were and were not doing. And now the IAEA is reporting that the cameras that they installed in certain nuclear enrichment sites in Iran for purposes of observation of what the Iranians are doing were either damaged or destroyed completely. So in fact, we don't know what they're doing, but it's being reported today in the press that enrichment has gone up to get this 90%. They're well beyond the threshold of being able to produce bombs. If they don't have nuclear weapons yet, Annie, they're really close to being able to do maybe a half a dozen of them, according to international intelligence officers and experts. My question for you is, there's no doubt they're racing to the bomb. There's no doubt nobody's doing anything to stop them. The question is, when they get the bombs, are they going to use them? Well, I would say with the information I have, I don't think they're racing to the bomb. They're at the fi finish line. Uh, and I just wanna say, I'm sorry, I keep inserting my own thing in the. It is amazing to me if, they know Iran is doing what they're not supposed to do to the extent of requiring cameras. And why don't they just shut it down? Wouldn't that make more sense, Barry? Well, like it's kind of releasing a murderer or a rapist and say, we're just going to have this camera follow you around all day long because we know you're going to rape again. Well, the fact is the IAE inspectors were banned from the enrichment sites. So they figured they had an improvement by Iran saying, okay, you can put up cameras, which Iran then destroyed. So nobody in the world has proof of their compliance and the leaking information and what they're putting out, they being Iran is, hey, we're almost there, which means, as you said, they may already be there. Are they gonna use those bombs? Of course they will. You really think it's a coincidence that as they're doing that, the squad is trying to defund the protection of Israel? You really think that's a coincidence? No. And yes, Iran will use the bombs. As I have said many times before, Ruhollah, Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini arrived in Iran and the very first thing that came out of his mouth was, let the plan begin. We're going to take down the great Satan America and destroy Israel. The whole purpose of this battle has been to be able to wipe Israel off the map. What do you, why would they stop now? They will use it. They will use it. But I want everybody to know that nobody gets to blame Islamic Republic of Iran's regime only. No, they had every single Western country's backing to get to where they are today. Well said, and it's pathetic because it's true and the blame should be spread around to all these countries racing to do business with them, wanting to build factories, wanting to export oil and gas, wanting to trade, wanting to bank them, and on and on and on. Annie, where can people find out about what you're doing? Uh, liveuptofreedom.com, liveuptofreedom.com, or if they do sign up to americantruthproject.org, they get all my segments with you as well. Perfect. And I encourage all of you to follow her. She's an expert. She's a scholar. And if you don't know your enemy, you have no one to blame but yourself. Thanks for joining us on ATP today and tuning in. Remember to sign up for our text message alert system by simply texting the word truth and sending it to the number 88202. When you push send, you'll get all of our information, including the wonderful Annie Cyrus on the palm of your hand on your cell phone, and it's always for free. For ATP Report, thanks for coming on to join us today. I'm Barry Nussbaum.